So putting Q2 and Q3 in, which are 9014s, might as well just check from the circuit whether they're NPN or PNP. Well, Q2 is a 9014 and it's an NPN. Q4 is a 9015 and that's a PNP. So we're doing the PNPs next, the 9015s. Okay, so 9015s. Yep. Are the remaining transistors Q4 and Q5? Get these the right way around. Just going by the silkscreen legend for the orientation. Hope that the board manufacturer's got that right. I trust them. Right. I do like nice, simple, single-sided boards, which you do stand just a little chance of getting components back out if you make a mistake. I really don't like double-sided and surface mount and all that. I really like this through-hole stuff. Get in there. There we are. Okay, trim those legs. I think that's all the transistors in. Now I can start thinking about some of the bigger components. There's an inductor there, a little axial lead inductor. This one here, they're often green, I don't know why. Uh, what's the colouring on that? It's brown, black, gold, I think. Let me look at that close up. No, it's brown, green, gold. So it's 15 something or others. So what have we got on the list? Well, we've got L1 as 1.5, they say microfarads. It's probably microhenries actually. L1, 1.5. Let's see if we can find L1 on here. Oh, there's L1. Oh, so you have to stand it up. Okay, well, that's fine. I can do that. So the 1.5 is good enough for me. Actually, I could check this. Let me crop this leg. So I'm thinking it should be 1.5 micro Henry's. In it goes, switch on. What have we got? Oh, 0 0.14, so it's point ohms resistor. That's not right. I'm saying it's a resistor. Why is it not telling me it's an inductor? Hmm. I suppose that could be a resistor. It just looks like one of those inductors. Well, it's telling me it's uh, point, well, 0.15 last time, 0.19 ohms this time. It's a very low resistance. I do think this is an inductor, but it doesn't seem very inductive. I presume this is up near, yes, this is actually in series with the antenna. That's really weird that that doesn't show that as an inductor. Wait a minute, I'm going to get the other component tester. Just in case the component tester is has a limit on inductance. Let's use this one. Let's take the battery off. There may be a lower limit on inductance uh, that that will measure. Okay. Where's my inductor where it is? Actually, this is the one where the where the things don't open properly. Right, test. Testing, well that's showing a resistor as well. So this inductor is obviously not very inductive. 
neither of them are picking up that it's an inductor. I mean, I'm have, just going to have to go with the fact that um, this is the inductor. I can't imagine it's much inductance since it is just in series with the antenna. It's definitely L1 because there's not much left on the table. Screws, wires. Well, actually, the only electronic component left now is the tunable uh, transformer inductor thing, whatever it is. Yeah, this must be L1. So let's shove it in there. It fits in reasonably tightly, so that should hold itself while I solder it. And there it is. That was my earliest memory of electronics. I think when I was about seven, my dad bought me for my birthday. We didn't have a lot of money. So he splashed out on a battery. I think it was a D sized battery uh, and a bulb and two pieces of wire, which you might think was a pretty mean gift, but actually it was probably the best present I ever had because I just loved that battery and bulb and two pieces of wire. Now this transformer uh, has three taps on one side and two taps on the other. So I should be able to get this in the right way round. The silk screen on the board shows the three taps and the two taps. Oh, well, there's actually three pins on one side and two on the other. So I can't really get that wrong. So that goes in there. That seems to be holding itself in reasonably well. Move that capacitor a bit. Yes, yeah, so I think that was probably what got me started on electronics. And I just was so pleased with that gift of a bell of a bulb and a battery and two bits of wire that um, subsequent Christmases or birthdays or whatever they were were followed up with the electronics kits, the electronics sets. And that was it, I was hooked. And then I can't remember how old I was, probably 11 or 12, my mum bought me a couple of electronics magazines. And I remember one of them, it was ETI. I even remember what project was on the front cover, some sort of burglar alarm. I'd probably recognise that front cover if I saw it. Right, that's the tunable inductor in. Now, remaining parts to be soldered on the board. Still haven't got R10. If I can't work out what R10 is, I'll just shove a wire link in there. Uh, but I'll try without R10 first. Depends whether it's sort of a series linked component or a parallel linked component. It's just a mystery that it's not on the list and it's obviously not here. Do you just leave it out? I presume you do. Right, that's the switch in, the uh, push button switch. Ah, stupid camera. I'm going to buy myself a new camera, I've decided. Probably for my birthday in February. Right, let's solder this switch in. Now, this is really a one hit thing because there's so many legs on this thing, it's not going to come out again without a lot of sucking. Okay, so there's some ground pins on this as well as the actual switch pins. Yikes, this is quite fine pitch. My solder's getting a bit short now. Yes, I think that's run out. Uh, more solder, there's some here. Yeah, here it is. Let's keep going. That pin's not connected. The outer shell of this switch is also soldered. Not sure how critical that is or whether it's just for 
mechanical mounting purposes. The switch is going to get a fair bit of pressure put on it when you're pressing it in and whatnot. So that probably is necessary to solder those. Okay, that's the switch in. Transmit and receive. Good, 10 minutes.